Hey, welcome back. It's episode 59, which is a prime number. It's not one of those tricky composite numbers like 57 or 91. Okay, we've been taking operation sequences like up, down, up, up, down, and solving for the m that loops back on itself. If m is an integer, then we have a 3n plus 1 counterexample. We kind of like to prove that m can never be an integer uh, except for the very small loop where k equals 2. Here are the seven loops of length k equals 8 with x equals 5 up moves each. And we've shown that the outer loop, starting with 211 over 13, uh, can never be composed of integers no matter how big k and x get. That took us a while. It's easy to show that 211 isn't a multiple of 13, but we showed it in general. And we've also shown that the inner loop can't be composed of integers. In between, though, there's a lot of potential integer loops. Look. Uh, 662 over 13. Is that an integer? Well, you never know. So in this episode, let's step back and ask two questions. One, how many loops are in between the inner loop and the outer loop as a function of k and x? And two, how many of those might be integer loops given our current knowledge? So when k and x get large, is it conceivable that almost all loops are integer loops? Half of them? 1% of them? Almost none? The 3n plus 1 conjecture says totally none but it's just a conjecture. So let's see what we know for sure. Uh, let's look at a little bit of a larger k and x now. So when k equals 13 and x equals eight, there are 99 distinct loops. Uh, the outer loop comes swooping down here, and the inner loop comes to here, and the other loops are in between. So how many of these 99 loops might be integer loops? Well, the inner loop's lowest member is 14,501, and every other loop has some member smaller than that. Now, every member of every loop takes to form uh, beta, which we're plotting here, over 2 to the k minus 3 to the x, which in this case is 1631. So uh, how many multiples of 1631 are less than 14,501? Only eight. So out of the 99 total loops, at most eight of them can be integer loops. Of course, none of them are, but this should give us the feeling that maybe very few operation sequences could even conceivably lead to integer loops. So let's try to prove that. Uh, first, how many loops of length k with x up moves? It's k choose x, which has a bunch of annoying factorials. Fortunately, we have Sterling's approximation for that. And we're also only considering cases where k is about x log 3. Otherwise, we won't be able to close the loop. We'll wind up uh, too high or too low compared to the starting point. So we can estimate k choose x like this, which simplifies to about 2.84 to the x, which means, yes, there are an exponential number of loops between the outer loop and the inner loop. In general, every loop has some member less than 3 to the x times x. That's the neighborhood of the inner loop's smallest member. And every member, of course, has the form beta over 2 to the k minus 3 to the x. So generally speaking, how many multiples of 2 to the k minus 3 to the x are less than 3 to the x times x? Well, if this difference between the powers is very small, we could have zillions of multiples of it uh, in the range. But Baker and Wren taught us that the difference is actually very large. Uh, he, it's guaranteed, for example, to be bigger than uh, 3 to the x over 250 times x to the 13.3. So cutting uh, up uh, 3 to the x times x into parcels of that size, we get around x to the 14th multiples at most. So we can summarize. There are 2.84 to the x total loops, but only x to the 14th of them can be integer loops, which means almost none of them. Uh, for example, for a modest x equals 100, loops with 100 uh, odd terms, we have 10 to the 45th possible loops, but only 10 to the 16th of them can conceivably be integer loops. Uh, that means for every integer loop, if there is one, there are this many non-integer loops. Or if every loop uh, is a pigeon uh, and having uh, integer numbers uh, in it is a pigeon hole, then there's just way too many birds. Of course, the 3m plus 1 conjecture says there's no pigeonholes at all, so sorry, birds, uh, if the conjecture is true. Okay, it's good to step by once in a, back once in a while 
And so in the next episode, let's dig more into how operation sequences produce these actual beta values so we can understand better why they might or might not be multiples of this difference. Okay, see you next time.